This year, the Des Moines Arts Center celebrates its 50th anniversary, and part of our celebration is this special exhibition, Commitment, Community, and Controversy. Our story begins about 1916. The world is at war. Uh, Woodrow Wilson is president. And emerging, there's a new generation of artists and architects, really ripe with influences. About the same time, this man, James Edmondson, and his second wife, Laura, announced that they'd be leaving money to build and care for a museum. Well, this announcement spurred a lot of people into action who began planning and working towards the realization of the Des Moines Arts Center. Edmondson was the first individual committed, but there were many others. About this time, the Des Moines Association of Fine Arts was formed under the leadership of this man, Sandy Carpenter. Carpenter was a bridge builder and a well-known art collector in the community. And the association brought nationally recognized exhibitions to Des Moines and also began collecting art for the future museum. Among the artists whose exhibits were presented here were Henry Tanner and Robert Henry. This is a work by Henry Tanner called Christ Walking on the Water. It was purchased by the association in the early 20s. Tanner was the first black student to attend the Pennsylvania Academy of Art, and he settled in France. Tanner painted this piece about 1907 while he was living in France. It's one of his most important religious paintings, and it's a mysterious, unusual interpretation of the biblical scene. Ballet Girl in White is by Robert Henry, and the association purchased this painting from the artist 18 years after it was painted. We believe that the artist's beautiful wife posed for this picture. These four prints are among almost 200 that have come into the Art Center collections. They were purchased in the 1950s, and they came from the Carpenter collection. But the prize of their collection was this one, a work by George Bellows called Aunt Fanny. Sandy Carpenter purchased this directly from the artist's studio in 1920 while the paint was still wet. It holds a special place in the Art Center collections because it's the first work purchased with Edmondson funds. It was purchased in 1942. The Coffin Fine Arts Trust was established in the name of Nathan Emery Coffin, and this trust has enabled the Art Center to purchase works by masters uh, throughout the years. One of these works is the one we're looking at now, The Burgers of Calais by Rodin who was a towering figure and the most famous sculptor since Michelangelo. You know, sometimes there have been controversial purchases, like in the early years. There was tension between those who wanted to acquire work from the past, the Goya painting I'm standing in front of, and those who were interested in acquiring work of artists from our times, like the Kuniyoshi. Both of these works were acquired during Dwight Kirsch's tenure as director at the Art Center. He was the third director. The, the Coles family has been very active as art patrons, both in Minneapolis and Des Moines. I'm standing next to portraits of Elizabeth and John Coles, and behind me is also a portrait by the, of the Coles. A, a lot of works from their collections have come to the Art Center. And also, uh, one of the rare examples is a work by Brancusi called Maestra. This area of the exhibition focuses on works that were collected during the directorship of Tom Tibbs. Before coming to Des Moines in 1958, uh, Tibbs was the director at the uh, Museum of, of Crafts in New York and also the Huntington Galleries in West Virginia. Uh, Jim Demetrian brought this painting by John Singer Sargent into the collection. It's a very unusual composition, but even more so, what is extraordinary is the way these two children are portrayed. A wonderful but unusual aspect of this exhibition is that visitors can see uh, works which normally would not be installed next to one another. We have tribal work next to early 20th century, next to contemporary art. The idea, again, of, of focusing on these five directors is to show the commitment, the controversy, and community that helps support the Art Center. The Art Center has benefited throughout the years from corporate support. And I'm standing in front of a double portrait by Andy Warhol of Gardner Coles that was given to the Art Center by the Des Moines Register and Tribune. And next to me 
is a sculpture by Deborah Butterfield. It's called Untitled, but it's of the horse named Hoover. It's very rare that Butterfield actually created a work by a, of a living horse. Uh, this particular piece was given to the Art Center by the, the principal financial group who funded this exhibition. Some of the objects on view have been acquired to fill in gaps in our holdings, while others have added to existing strengths. By 1987, the Des Moines Arts Center's second edition to its building opened to the public, and Julia Brown Terrell was then director. She came from the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles and brought with her a keen and critical eye which embraced not only environmental art, but urban design and architecture. This haunting bronze sculpture called Piggyback was created by Juan Munoz, a Spanish artist, 42 years old. Michael Danoff purchased this piece for the collection, and it shows one male figure that's piggybacked atop another. It, it seems to call up an image of one person helping or carrying one another, but another interpretation is that both faces are the same person, and the work is a metaphor for the baggage, psychological and physical, that each of us carries. Together we've journeyed through some enlightened and adventuresome works of art that covers over 80 years of collecting. We're very proud of, of what has been accomplished through time and commitment and energy and faith. And we hope that you will enjoy yourselves through the exhibition. There's a lot to see and learn, so we look forward to seeing you again.